Hey guys. Well, I told you I was going to start sharing some stories that I hadn't shared before. So I'm going to share another one with you today. Um, I know I look bad. I don't feel good either. I have a chronic brain thing that I have to deal with that uh, is from birth control usage that I'll deal with for the rest of my life. And it's been causing me problems the past few weeks. So um, anyway, but I, I didn't want that to prevent me from sharing. So anyway, I already know. I already know I don't look good. So anyway, um, one time at the uh, clinic, we had a woman come in and she was, uh, so I don't want to give out a lot of like detailed information, but, um, she was a woman from another country and her husband was there. He, he worked, uh, there in our town. He had a very, very well paid, uh, job there. They were both immigrants. Um, he was there on a work visa and they had several children, uh, many children and, um, whatever their cultural beliefs were, um, they did not believe in taking any sort of contraception. They believed that it damaged, that that would damage the womb. Um, but she also was not allowed to, uh, refuse sex. So if he wanted sex then she, she had to, um, give it to him and, um, he would not use any sort of prophylactic, um, and so, uh, but they had reached their desired number of children and she was not a, she, she was not an old woman, um, at all. She was definitely a woman who was still in her fertile years. And so then what do you do? Um, you're, uh, not allowed to chart and, um, you're not allowed to abstain from sex if you know you're in your fertile window. You're not allowed to do anything to prevent pregnancy. So what do you do? Well, um, her husband had told her that if she ever got pregnant again, that um, he would send her back to her native country without her children. And, um, and if she got pregnant and had an abortion, that he would kill her. And it wasn't like, like, you know, someone else will say, oh my gosh, if I bought another pair of shoes, Doug is going to kill me. It wasn't like that. I mean, she said it with fear in her voice that he would kill her. And I never encountered a, a situation like that when I was at the clinic. And it became very apparent that he was physically abusive with her and um, as well. And she made it very clear that he had never hurt the children, but... Culturally, I don't know if that's true. Um, maybe in her eyes, he wasn't hurting them, but maybe he was. I don't, I don't know. So, um, she was fearful of being sent back to her country without her children. And so she decided that she needed to have an abortion and she had no money and uh, she was not given any money. She was given, um, an allowance to buy groceries and she had to give receipts back to him. Um, and the money had to, to match identically to whatever was given to her and, and the money that was brought back. And, um, and so uh, she didn't know what she was going to do. She didn't know how she was going to have to have this abortion. And, and certainly this was a, a special case and you know, we never did abortions for free or anything like that. So, um, even though we had, you know, $23 million of Warren Buffett's money. Um, so I, I went to, to my boss, who was the, the regional coordinator, and I asked her, I explained the situation. I asked her um, if, if she thought that maybe we could just, um, what we called charitable fund, the, the entire abortion procedure. I mean, goodness, Warren Buffett would pay for the whole thing. And, uh, all we had to do was just write it off to him. And she said, she can't pay anything. And I said, no, she has, she has no money. She's, um, she has to account for every penny. 
And my boss said to me, well, if she wants the abortion, she's going to have to pay at least $50. She said, she's got to have some skin in the game. And I thought, I, I don't know how she's going to come up with $50. And I, I tried to plead my case again. Like, she's not going to be able to find $50. But my boss was insistent. No, she'll find it. If she really wants an abortion, she'll find $50. So I went back to her and I said, my boss says we can do it for $50. And this woman broke down crying and said, I don't have $50. I cannot get $50. And I, I went through the list of things that we were supposed to tell them, you know, can you pawn something? And she says, I, I don't have anything to pawn. I don't have anything valuable. I, um, no, I, you know, I went through all these things, right? The list. And so I finally just said, I'll pay the $50. I'll, I'll pay to um, kill your child. I'll pay for the abortion. Because, of course, this is me helping empower her, right? So she was so thankful. So she came back. Um, a, a, she came back then a, a few days later for her abortion. She had to um, sneak around while her husband was at work and she had to get child care, and it was this big, big, big um, undertaking and um, very dangerous for her. And she came into the clinic, and, and she was she was wearing her the, the clothing that she usually wore um, during the day. And, uh, and so um, she asked if I could be in, in the room with her just to, to hold her hand. Um, during the abortion, which is not traditionally something that I, I, I did, but it was something that, that I, I, you know, I, I said I would do for her. So I, um, so I went in with her and, um, we, we pulled her dress all the way up from the bottom and, um, I went down to um, to help uh, open the the tray up for the doctor, and I realized um, that she had been a victim of female genital mutilation. I uh, had never I had never seen anything like that before in my life, and. Uh, And so I went back up to the, the top of the bed and just um, held her hand. And she was crying. I mean, she was really crying. She did not want to have that abortion that day. But um, she didn't know what else to do. And we had not given her any other options. And so instead of actually providing options for her, instead of actually saying to her, you know, how about we find you a safe place? Because your husband's beating the crap out of you. How about we find you a safe place for you and your children to live? How about we rescue you? No, we, I paid $50 and we sent her back into the arms of her abusive husband. And to this day, I don't even know if she's alive. Because chances are, she got pregnant again. And she might have had another abortion and maybe he found out that time. 
and maybe he killed her. Maybe that time he found out. That's women's empowerment, folks. And we did it over and over again. We didn't help women. We made them victims. We re-victimized them. Fifty bucks. Because she needed to have some skin in the game. Abortion never empowers. It only destroys.